Good Wednesday morning, everyone. Welcome back to Weather on the Go, all your weather coverage. In this video update, we will be taking a look at your climate update with an El Nino developing rapidly throughout this summer. And then we'll be looking at the summer 2023 update with your temperature and precipitation trends June, July, and August. And then we'll be looking at the severe weather forecast update June, July, and August of 2023 later on in today's video. But if you are not yet subscribed to the YouTube channel, now is the time to press the subscribe button, especially if you like detailed weather breakdowns on Southern Canada, the United States, and the tropics. This is the channel for you, and I provide with these updates each and every morning at 9 a.m. Central Daylight Time. So definitely appreciate all the new subscribers, and also it's very helpful to press the like button, the thumbs up button down below the video today. It helps out more than you know, so I appreciate that as well. So let's look at the climate update we do see warmer sea surface temperature anomalies across the equatorial pacific that is a huge signal in which we are rapidly intensifying the el nino across this region warmer waters do does mean that an El Nino is imminent and you do see a major jump in the El Nino and with positive anomalies here on this chart. Positive values are El Nino and negative values are La Nina with zero being more of an ENSO neutral. So we had a huge spike in that just a couple of days ago going all the way back to around May 20th, May 25th and we're up to plus 0 0.582 so we are really getting in towards at least weak El Nino status as of this morning. So as we go through looking here at the climate forecasting systems version two model, this is the upper heights model. This shows the 500 millibar or otherwise as mid-level height anomalies. This shows troughing across the Southern United States with oranges above that. That is a ridge of high pressure that does begin to build across Canada and the Northern and Northwestern United States largely as we go through June. So as such, my June temperature forecast, we have above normal temperatures expected here, especially in those orange outlined areas across portions of the Pacific Northwest, getting into the Northern Rockies, and then across the upper Midwest, down into the Southern Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley, especially with those above normal temperatures as we go through June. More average conditions with temperatures across Southern California, Southern Nevada, getting through the Central Rockies and then rounding around into the Southern Plains. Lanes, and then more below normal temperatures expected across the southern Four Corners region into West Texas as we go through the month of June. And taking a look at my June precipitation forecast, kind of revised this a little bit since my original summer forecast video, we still have more above normal precipitation expected in the very areas where we've seen a lot of wet weather recently across the central and northern Rockies down into the southern plains and parts of Dixie Alley here. More average conditions to the east there across the Ohio Valley and the lower Midwest on over into the Mid-Atlantic states. Average conditions also into the Pacific Southwest, including California, Nevada, and western Arizona. And then more below normal, at least slightly below normal with our precipitation across the upper Great Lakes, parts of the upper Midwest, and getting into the western and New England regions as we go through the month of June. Now, as we get head in towards July, we start to see those heights build a lot stronger as we have an anchored high pressure system signaled here on the long range guidance starting to build across the southern United States and we have more northwesterly flow over top of that here across the northern Rockies, the northern plains and the upper Midwest as we go through the month of July. So with that said we have below normal temperatures expected across the Pacific Northwest and parts of the west coast here as well in towards northern California through the month of July. More average conditions in between there for the inner mountain west but the heat will be on across the eastern two-thirds of the country for july that will be for sure especially if you're in these orange or even red anomalies here that's where i expect much above normal temperatures probably more of a full-blown heat wave throughout much of the month of july across the midwest into the ohio valley during that time frame and looking at the precipitation forecast for july i do expect it to get a little bit more above normal up here across the northern plains the upper midwest and the ohio valley i know it has been turning a lot drier recent but i do think an active storm 
Amtrak will take over across the northern states as we get through the month of July. And then across the southeast here, the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, and Florida, we will have to watch out for above normal precipitation and probably a little bit more influence of the tropics with this as well. So definitely some flooding rains is possible if a couple of tropical systems do move inland there into the southeast into July. More average conditions here in between across the New England states, northeast, getting in towards the, the mid-south and the deep south here, and the Pacific Northwest, much of the west coast, more average conditions for precipitation. A little bit slightly below normal across the Four Corners region and into West Texas here as we go through July with that anchored high-pressure system down here. I think we're going to have a lot of sinking air through the month of July, so that will be hard to get a lot of precipitation as we go through that time frame. And finally, looking into August. This is the height anomalies and that anchored high pressure system is going nowhere. That will continue to revolve around the southern United States. More northwesterly flow aloft here across the northern Rockies and the upper Midwest and even parts of the Great Lakes at times getting through the month there of August. So with that said much of the country, 80 90% of the country will be at least slightly above average with our temperatures. Much above average in the orange and especially the red shaded color here across the Ohio Valley, getting into the Missouri Valley and parts of the Central Plains going through August. And again, much of the country will be above normal, except for the Pacific Northwest. I do think these areas and probably even southwestern Canada, British Columbia, Alberta, and parts of Saskatchewan may be more average conditions for temperatures through the month of August. And then finally, looking at my August precipitation forecast, it will still be slightly above normal normal here across the northern plains, the upper Midwest, the Ohio Valley, and the New England. I think more active storm track across this region. Anchored high pressure system across the south and southwest will lean more toward below normal precip for a brief period of time there into August across the Pacific Southwest and the Gulf Coast states as well, and with more average conditions across the central and southern plains and everywhere in between there toward the central Rockies as well going through August. And now we have to look at the severe weather forecast as well. So this is a favorable derecho pattern. And again, not always the high pressure systems will be across the southeast. They could be across the southwest or the southern plains. But this graphic just shows you the airflow around a high pressure system is clockwise. And when you get these major heat waves, you always have to talk about serial or progressive derechos. Usually during the warm season, we have to lean more toward progressive derechos being an issue up here toward the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Ohio Valley. So with that said, derecho climatology, anywhere in this blue outlined area, Chicago, Illinois, Indianapolis, getting into Detroit, down into St. Louis, Little Rock, those areas are prone to seeing a derecho on average around every single year. So that is kind of more of a climatological look at things. But if you live in northeastern Oklahoma, southwestern Missouri, or northwest Arkansas in this purple outlined area, you can see on average four to ratios every three years. So very frequent down in that corridor in the Joplin area, getting in toward the Fayetteville, Fort Smith, Arkansas region, and over here toward Tulsa, Oklahoma as well for derecho climatology. And it's very frequent by the month. Right now we're going into June, so it kind of dips down from 22% back to 20% frequency, but then has another jump as we go into July to 21% before falling off again to 6% as we go into August. So we still have a primed atmosphere if everything comes together just right through the summer months, especially early to midsummer, for a derecho pattern to occur. But just know that derechos can occur any month out of the year. It could happen in January, it could happen in February, or even in December as well. It has happened before and can happen. So definitely wanted to note that as well. So with that said, my severe weather probability forecast for June, I think if you're in the orange shade of color, there definitely could be some mesoscale convective systems, possibly a derecho develop in the middle and end of June up here across the upper Midwest, the Ohio Valley and the Mid-Atlantic states. That will be an area to keep an eye on, but more high probability for severe weather in the areas we've really seen the severe weather as of late the last few weeks across the central and southern plains. That likely will continue as we go through the month of June across portions of South 
South Dakota, Nebraska, getting into western Kansas and as far south as the Red River here into Oklahoma and Texas. And that could be as far west as the Denver region into Colorado as well through the month of June. This will mainly be for large hail and damaging winds, but of course, with severe weather, you can always see tornadoes. So that will always be a possibility going through that time frame. But as we go into July, my severe weather probability jumps to high and extreme even up here across the upper Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Ohio Valley. This is a concern. As we go into July, a very strong anchored high pressure system across the Southern Plains could feed into more of a derecho pattern as we go in towards the July month time frame. So we definitely have to keep an eye on that, especially if you live in Milwaukee, Green. Green Bay up here into Minneapolis, St. Paul, Chicago, Fort Wayne, Indiana in the Toledo area, and maybe even Detroit as well as we go through July. Definitely something to keep an eye on, but we could be seeing more severe weather still lingering across the central and southern plains at times going through the month there of July. And finally, as we go into August, my severe weather probability drops back to medium here. We still could be seeing some stronger mesoscale convective systems, some storm complexes revolving around the heat wave here that sets up somewhere across the southern and southeastern United States. The northern periphery of that will be across the upper Midwest and Ohio Valley. So as such, I did put a medium category for that up across those regions and also a medium category for severe storms possible across the Rockies getting down into northwest flow into northwest Texas and Oklahoma. We could have more enhanced hail storms and stuff like that potentially into August more microbursts as we go through that time frame so that will be an area to keep an eye on as well through the month of August well putting it all together with my official summer forecast update for 2023 uh, the more average conditions across portions of the west coast and the Pacific Southwest I think it'll be a hot summer it also will have some cooler periods as well you'll see some rain you'll see some dry weather just kind of going back and forth throughout the summer here that's more average conditions especially into Washington State, Oregon, California, and Nevada. More sizzling heat all across the Rockies getting into the central southern plains, and this does include as far east as Arkansas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. I do think especially as the summer wears on through July and especially August, if we get an anchor high pressure system to sit across the Four Corners region or the southern plains, it could get rather hot and blazing hot, if not sizzling heat across this region as we go through the summer. So definitely watch out for drought across those areas and then more severe weather up here into the upper Midwest, the Southern Great Lakes and the Ohio Valley. I definitely think a derecho pattern could definitely be setting up as we go into July. That will be a period to keep an eye on for derechos and just severe weather in general. Dry conditions across the Northeast getting down into the mid-Atlantic states of West Virginia and Virginia here, parts of Maryland, Delaware and on Northeastward. Those areas including the I-95 corridor, Boston to New York City and down into New Jersey there. I do think drier conditions will prevail. You will still see some rain, but when you average the summer out, dry conditions can be expected. And then across the southeast, Tennessee, the Carolinas getting in toward Alabama, Georgia, and Florida. We will have to keep an eye on the active, uh, the active tropics as we go through, especially July and August, as we get deeper into hurricane season. There could be a system worth watching as we get toward the middle of summer across the southeast. So that will be something to keep an eye on for flooding rain, some wind potential, and even waves as well if you are going to the beach out there across the southeast. Well, thank you so much for watching. If you want to follow me on Twitter for additional weather forecast updates, be sure to hit the description down below and follow me on Twitter at hweather420. I do update on that platform very frequently, so I definitely appreciate if you would follow me on there as well. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching today's video. If you liked today's video, be sure to press the thumbs up button down below. Leave any comments, questions, and concerns below. I'll get to those later on today. Subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new and hit the notification bell to get all of my daily weather forecast updates on this channel. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. A great end of May, and I will see you all in the next video.